I'm Lorval. I'm Victor. We are both from Ring Zero Networks, and we are going to present our work on scripting the Linux network with Lua. This work was also developed by Ana Lucia de Moura and Roberto Elisalinski from PUC Rio University in Rio de Janeiro. We'd like to thank the NetDevConf organization, especially Jamal, for, for all his kind of support. We have been working on scripting operating systems kernels since 2008. Lunatic is our kernel script framework for Linux, which supports developers to make their subsystems scriptable and also allows users to dynamically load their scripts into the kernel. We believe that Lua is an adequate choice for scripting the kernel because it's quite small and fast scripting language and widely used for scripting network tools such as Wireshark and MOP and Snort. In this presentation, we're gonna focus on scripting two Linux network subsystems, NetFuture and XDP. We have developed two bindings, bindings respectively for these uh, subsystems. One is NFLua and the other XDP Lua. In order to script uh, the kernel, we need to prevent kernel scripts to introduce malfunction into the system, such as crashing it, running indefinitely, or, or even corrupting it. For doing that, we leverage the Lua VM facilities for sending boxing the scripts. So firstly, we need to care about the scripting scripts addressing memory. Fortunately, Lua provides dynamic memory management, so scripts can't address memor memory directly. Instead, they need to use Lua native data types, such as strings and tables. All Lua objects are located by the Lua VM and subjected to a garbage collector. Unfortunately, this is not enough for preventing the scripts to cause harm to the system. They could eventually allocate too much memory. For this, Lua provides a facility to define custom memory allocators. We use these on our uh, network scripting bindings for capping the memory allocated by the script. So whenever a script try to allocate too much memory, we just raise an error. Lua also pro provides fully isolated execution states. We have separated uh, execution states for every purpose. For instance, uh, XDP Lua has one state per CPU. And all those states are created empty, completely empty. So the kernel developer can choose what libraries to load into such states. We have here two examples of, of libraries. One is Lua data that is used to access ex memory external to the, the Lua VM safely. We use these, for instance, on both NF Lua and XDP Lua for accessing packets inside the scripts. And we have here also Lua RCU that we use to share memory across the execution states. Lua also runs in a single threaded execution environment, which means that it doesn't provide any synchronization mechanism like mutex, and then scripts cannot explicitly lock a kernel flow. 
However, the scripts could still run indefinitely, right? So Lua provides a facility to interrupt the script after execution, executing a given amount of instructions. In this case, we just uh, set a callback for be called after a script runs uh, this amount of execution, is it, this amount of instructions, sorry. Both NFLua and XDP Lua leverage this facility to prevent script, kernel scripts to run indefinitely. As mentioned before, Lunatic allows the creation of multiple execution states uh, in the kernel. Provide in that way multitasking. We'll talk a bit more of this later on in this presentation. Uh, besides all that, NF, both NF Lua and XCP Lua allow only the network administrators to load code and access the execution states in the kernel. We do this by using a Netlink socket for communicating with the user space and checking the net admin capability on every access. NF Lua is our exten net filter extension for providing packet filtering with Lua. It's especially useful for implementing advanced layer seven filtering. We can have IP tables rules to match uh, layer three and four, and then call Lua to inspect the upper layer. And if Lua is widely used by network operator for operators for advanced security and network monitoring features, and it's completely implemented uh, as a loadable kernel module. Here is how NF Lua works. Assume you want to filter the HTTP requests and check if uh, the user agent is in a black in a block list. For instance, to block access from a curl client. So to do this, we need first to create an execution state on NFLua using the NFLua control tool. And then we need to load the script, check user agent in this case, into the state. This is the example of uh, the check user agent. We use the Lua string library to do to for pattern matching and extract the user agent from the HP request and then check against a block list and verify if this user agent should be blocked or not. So after loading the script, we need to create a IP tables rule to call the script when we get a packet. In this case, it will match all income packets destined to TCP port 80 and call, Lua, call this particular function check user agent in Lunatic. So whenever NetFilter receives a packet on port TCP80, NetFilter will send the packet to NFLua and then call the check user agent function. If the function returns true, then NetFilter will terminate the connection. Now Vitor will talk about XDP Lua. So XDP Lua is an extension of XDP that allows the usage of Lua inside the data bar. It was created as a natural evolution of NF Lua because it processed, it processed packets before 
they were received by the networking stack and also because XCPU Lua creates one Lua state per CPU, thus taking advantage of multi-CPU systems parallelism. Uh, one of our goals of XCP Lua was to add expressiveness and dynamism into the data path. Uh, so to help programmers create more complex ap applications to be loaded inside the framework. To extend it, the XDP to allow the usage of Lua, we scripted eBPF with Lua uh, by creating eBPF helpers that are basically wrappers to the Lua C API and does allow eBPF programs to call Lua scripts. Uh, also, we wanted to use eBPF with Lua, wanted those two to cooperate so we could have the best of both of them. So for example, we wanted eBPF's performance and Lua's expressiveness and dynamism. To better illustrate how XDP Lua works, I'll use the same example as Dorival used in the NF Lua slides, which is the user agent verification. So the first thing that will happen is that the user would load the check user agent function. Afterwards, he would load the DTF program into XCP. Let's say eventually an HTTP request arrives uh, at XCP, which will in turn execute the UTF program, which will see that it has just received a TCP packet destined to port 80. And so it will call the Lua function check user agent. This function, as Laura already said, will extract the user agent from the HTTP request, see if it is in a block list, and if it is, it will return a value to the DTF program telling it to drop the packet. And of course, if it isn't, it will return another value telling the DTF program to let, to let the packet pass through to the networking stack. Uh, we implemented two applications to validate our solution. Uh, the first one is JavaScript challenge, which is basically a method to distinguish legitimate from illegitimate users using HTTP cookies. So for example, let's say that we have a malicious bot that's trying to act to connect with our HTTP server. If, let's say the first thing this bot does is send an HTTP request to our server, which will then receive this request and seeing that this is the first time that this client is trying to connect with us, will generate a random cookie value that's specific for this client. Afterwards, it will send a message to XTP Lua saying, telling it that any further HTTP requests sent by this specific client must have the just generated cookie value in uh, set in the any future requests. Uh, after that, of course, the HTTP server will send uh, an HTTP response with a JavaScript code embedded on it telling the client to set the cookie to the just generated cookie value. Uh, this is the Lua function used in, the, in this application, which is check cookie. As you can see, it's pretty simple. And it, what it does is simply extract the cookie from the HTTP request, see if the extracted cookie is indeed correct for this specific user, and return a value according. So let's say that that malicious bot is trying to connect with our server once again. Uh, so it will send an HTTP request to the server, which will then arrive at XCP, which will execute the BZF program, which will see that it has just received a TCP packet destined to port 80, and then it will call the Lua function check cookie. This function, as I said before, will extract the cookie from the HTTP request, see if it is the correct value. But in this case, since it was sent by a bot, which we, which typically can't process JavaScript, the cookie won't be present in the request. And so the Lua function check cookie will return a value telling the VTF program to drop the packet. But before doing that, the BPF program will store the IP address of the client in a block list so that any future packets sent by this client will be blocked by the EBPF program 
since the IP address of the bot will be in the blacklist. So the EBVF program won't need to call Lua anymore. Uh, the other application we developed was access control, which is basically a domain filter that blocks access to specific domains for all users in a given network. So to try and further explain how it works, I'll show you <clears throat> how it, it is implemented in XCP Lua. Uh, well, the first thing that will happen is that uh, the user will load the block list into XCP Lua. Uh, then it will the user will load the check SNI Lua function. And of course, it will load then the VPF program into XCP. Let's say a package arrives at XDP, and in this case, this packet will be a TLS client hello. Uh, and so the BPF program will process it, see that it is a TCP packet destined to port 443, and then call the Lua function check SNI. This function will extract the SNI from this uh, packet, see that, see if it is in a block list or not. And if it is in a block list, it will send a message to the ABPF program, sorry, it will return a value to the ABPF program telling it to drop the packet, or the, otherwise it will send another value to the ABPF program telling it to let the packet pass through to the networking stack, thus impeding any TLS sessions destined to that specific domain from occurring. So, uh, we ran a few benchmarks uh, <clears throat> comparing XDP without Lua, XDP Lua and NF Lua. Uh, we had to develop a pure VPF version of the access control application to be executed inside XDP. And it is important to note that this was really harder to do than implementing the XDP Lua version. And the result was a cumbersome C code. Uh, it's also important to say that XDP Lua and NF Lua shared the same Lua script implementation. Uh, also, the benchmark consisted of a client sending as much TLS client hello packets as possible to the server. Uh, these packets were generated by TrapGen. And it's also important to say that all of the TLS client hello packets had an SNI on them that was in the block list. This means that every TLS client hello packet sent to the server was dropped by the access control application. Uh, with that said, we measured the drop rate and the CPU usage on the server. Uh, we ran this benchmark in a fully virtualized environment. Both the client and the server had one CPU with eight cores running at three gigahertz. And they also had 32 gigabytes of ROM and a 10 gigabit per second VertIO network interface. So these are the results. As you can see, we generated 1.5 million packets per second, which was enough to stress NF Lua. And as you can see, NF Lua, which, which, which dropped approximately a third of what XDP and XDP Lua could. Uh, which, as you can see, drop approximately the same thing. Also, as you can see by the CPU usage, XCP Lua and XCP without Lua uh, <clears throat> use approximately the same amount of CPU, while NF Lua used 500 times that. Uh, we believe that is because NF Lua only processes packets before they have they have passed through the networking stack, and also because and if Lua doesn't take advantage of the multi core uh, CPU, which we had in the, this case in this specific benchmark. Also, I think it's important to say that in this specific scenario, having XCP execute Lua scripts didn't have a significant impact in the performance. As final remarks, we would like to point out that NF Lua is widely used by network operators for implement, uh, implementing advanced security 
uh, network monitoring features. It is currently present in around two, 20 million home routers. XDP Lua is the evolution, the natural evolution of NF Lua, applying the lessons we learned from the NF Lua's development, such as using multitasking, uh, having one state per CPU, also leveraging XDP uh, bypass from the network stack. XDP Lua was designed from the very beginning to use Lua cooperatively with eBPF, adding the expressiveness and the ease of use of Lua to the performance of eBPF. In that way, we strongly believe that we can have advanced uh, applications implemented using eBPF to leverage performance and Lua for implementing more complex code. XDP Lua is currently used in Ring Zero Firewall, running in points of presence with 10 gigabits per second to put, using only up to 4% of CPU. We also would like to point out that one downside of XDP Lua development, uh, it has been quite hard to, to develop this as an out of three binding. Uh, differently from NetFilter, which has X tables that was quite useful for the NF Lua development, XDP doesn't have uh, doesn't support extensions as loadable kernel modules. So it would be great if we could have some something similar to Xtables on XDP for our uh, particular user case. So we also showed that we can apply sandboxing techniques instead of having an internal verifier which has at least in our case, or has shown as quite hard to to use for as pointed by Vitor on our benchmark developing the access control application was a bit hard to, to implement the same feature parsing SNI and in eBPF mainly because of the internal verifier and especially we won't, weren't able to develop the same block list based on SNI we have on our Lua script, mainly also because the internal verifier. So that's it, we would like to thank you. Uh, here are our info, feel free to reach us out in time. And if you have some, any questions. Uh, thank you. So we do have uh, a few questions, uh, but I wanted to start off with probably um, with regards to Linux, the, the area that's going to be um, the hardest to overcome. So, Clearly, this is uh, a major programming environment we're trying to put in the kernel. And I think up front, we, we have to be realistic that trying to upstream something like this is going to be um, a lot of work if that's the intent. So I think we can compare this to XDP, um, eBPF, and particularly the verifier, which provide uh, a safe environment. And this is really a lot of what XDP is about and eBPF is that we can guarantee a safe environment. So if we ever wanted to get this upstream, and I think that that's the first order goal, how are we going to convince the world that we can run a Lua, um, I assume interpreter inside the kernel and guarantee that it's safe? So. 
I'm Lorval. Lorval. How to con- sure. So how 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 can we upstream this in the kernel? Um, because the kernel has a lot of requirements and we have to ensure uh, complete safety. So for instance, we cannot have the kernel crash because a Lua program accesses the wrong memory. So how, how would we enforce all the safeguards? So um, I think we have talked at this a uh, little bit in the presentation, but mainly we don't access memory di- directly, right? Lua doesn't have pointers, so your script cannot address uh, memory directly, but they can allocate memory. For these, we can limit the amount of memory that that's going to be allocated by the, the execution state, right? Uh, the other thing is to run indefinitely. We don't have a sort of verifier like eBPF, but we can limit the amount of instructions that going to be executed by the by Lua, right? So if it exceeds, you can take some policy to interrupt the execution state or just raise an error and fall back into a fail safe mechanism. Um, don't know what, what else you think that could be um, a security uh, issue for. Well, for it's. So, so thinking, assuming that you want to get this upstream, um, the arguments about safety will have to be crystal clear. And the the other thing you're very likely to get um, pushback on, or, or at least somebody will ask this question: Why can't we just build a Lua to eBPF compiler? So remember, eBPF is not a programming language; it's a bytecode. So we already have a C to eBPF, we have P4 to eBPF. Why not just have a Lua to eBPF? You can have like Lua syntax to eBPF, but not the whole package, right? Like having a actual Lua VM uh, on top of eBPF. It's like you have the verifier, it's a limited language. It's not, I mean, the language itself not, but it's limited by the by the verifier itself. So you cannot run Turing complete code on top of this. So you may have some uh, subset of, of Lua like using its syntax, but not a complete implementation, right? Well, it, it's so yeah. then thinking about the response to that. So the reason we restrict uh, the language is precisely because it has to be a safe environment. So for instance, we can't have uh, a construct in C that gets into an infinite loop or we've bricked a, a core in the kernel. So we have to realize the kernel is, in, as a programming environment, it's an unforgiving environment. And that's you know just projecting the sort of uh, questions you'll get when the upstream conversation happens. I think it's going to be heavily along these lines. How do you ensure that this is a safe program to run in the kernel? And um, again, why why can't we just use eBPF? So I don't have answers to this. Actually, I think um, in one regard, I think you did a really good job in isolating the, the Lua parts out of X, XDP and using helper functions. I think that's that's a good interface. So it does isolate this so we don't have to modify XDP, which is really good. Uh, but still, uh, I think the questions around the safety are going to be um, brought up quickly uh, the, as this goes forward. The thing is, it is that verifying the user code is not the only way to provide safety, right? You can sandbox doing this uh, on runtime, like we do. I don't. I would like to exercise some particular user case you have in mind. Uh, for crashing it, uh, like crashing our verif- memory verification or limiting the instructions, how how a script a script could uh, run definitely if you have like a hook on the VM itself, 
of course, you can have like the uh, major bu bug in the VM itself, but if the VM is working like the verifier is working, it's just uh, about where you put your verifications. It's take uh, co compiling time, uh, on loading time, or on execution time, right? We are not okay. uh, skipping verifications. Okay. Can I add, add one? Can I add a comment here? I think I think the meta point is obviously valid, right? But the bigger issue, I think, is effectively you have two VMs now, and not only is that added complexity, it's also added surface area. So I think if you can reduce the Lua VM footprint to things that do not run in kernel context and run in the hot path, which is one one manifestation of that would be what Tom was suggesting, which is you compile out the EBPF. You've reduced the number of VMs to the EBPF VM. And I think the EBPF VM has, has momentum and has acceptance, which is also a thing that we need to worry about. Uh, so I think the question that will come down is how do you sandbox them in such a way that both the VMs are not possibly in your hot path? Because it, it, like you said, limit the number of instructions. I need one instruction to do an infinite loop that that cannot, I won't be able to protect against that in a meaningful way unless I go understand the VM like EBPF does through its verifier. Right? So, so I think I think it's a multi VM story. And by the way, I, I, I like the answer, like Tom said, I'm not saying I have any problems with what you guys have done. It's actually pretty fascinating. But from a community perspective, the answer of two VMs would be problematic. Yes. Uh, sorry. So, I think that the, this discussion started on how to convince these on uh, the upstream, right? But uh, I think it's not the angle we are trying to approach. It's more like it would be good if, if we have some extensibility on top of uh, XDP that we could uh, extend the kernel with. Uh, our execution environment the same way we do with NetFuture. Uh, and Aflua doesn't need to, to be in the upstream. It can be, it, it is a simple X tables extension. If it could have some sort of mechanism to do this the same for XDP, for me to be the, the, the path, the right path first. Well, that, that's going to be a hard sell too. So, XDP um, did start with the intent that, that it could be pluggable and open, but now it's really an eBPF hook. And um, that's, that again is going to get, get pushed back. So I, I think all of this, you know, just take it as, as feedback and input. Um, like Trajit said, I, I think the, it's really cool what you're doing, but uh, this is definitely a moonshot. And, you know, I think, uh, I think we just need to be aware of that. So let's I, move on. Uh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I, I just think, look, I think the, the Lua serves slightly different purposes. It's a scripting as opposed to compilable language. It's not intended to be for the, uh, you know, high intense performance requirements, but it does serve a purpose. Uh, the two VM angle, I, I agree with both of you, actually, that this is a, a battle upstream because uh, BPF has formed a religion now, more than anything. This is uh, whether you have two VMs or not is not as relevant because uh, you want to use the Lua VM, you go ahead and use it, as opposed to you know you want to use the BPF VM. Um, the security issues, the requirements, I think Lua would meet them. It would just meet them slightly differently, right? You can you can restrict the functionality that Lua any Lua interpreter can have. You uses the same helpers. The biggest value eBPF has is it has helpers in the kernel. I've been exposed to it, which if I'm not mistaken, Lua, uh, Lunatic could use, right? Uh, yes, it's mostly a political battle than it is a technical problem right now. So Jamel, um, if performance isn't relevant, then the obvious question, why even put this in the kernel? Why not just put this in user space and run the oh, packets uh, through tongue tap or something? Sometimes you just want to uh, have a quick um, protection while you're building something. That's the way I would say this, right? I, I, I've been in a data center where they wouldn't allow code that you've compiled, but they don't have a problem with you installing a patch script, right? 
They will absolutely not even fix the driver's buggy, but it's okay to, to run a bash script. Right, so I, I would see that maybe similar here. No, no, but that actually, there is a way to fix that problem. And I haven't looked at any of the codes, so I won't presuppose this, but you could say that all the classification work, all the per packet ops is in XDP, lives in the XDP VM. And all the policies are in pure Lua user space and runs in Lua user space and the exchange is through the shared maps, right? With RCU as somebody suggested already or somebody said already. So there might be a line to cut where the packet touching, which is really in the kernel's domain, stays in the kernel domain and not in the Lua domain. Right? Uh, would you guys agree with that? Nirval, Victor? I, I, sorry. The thing is, you would add latency to go to the user space, right? To take the decision over uh, this policy. And using something like uh, NFQ with uh, NetFilter, right? We have tried this approach in the past, but NFLua was way more adequated uh, solution for our use case, right? So it can take decision in the kernel while the, the packet is going through without um, moving these to all the way up to the user space. But that's, that's, uh, that's presupposing, and there may be performance reasons why you have to do it that way, but that's presupposing that you cannot push the cached policy or the downloaded policy till you've seen the first packet. Um, I mean, take take a simple example of a star 80 block, right? That can be pushed before you see the packet even, right? So it's sort of, uh, the question is like, where is the cache and what is the update policy, right? If you say that I push policies, updated Lua policies from before for the basic stuff and only for the really complicated deep lookups, I'm going to take the added latency. There may be a happy medium and I'm actually not even sure that that's, reasonable, but there may be things like that that is worth pursuing. Lua in, in that way works like a glue code and configuration code as well. So we can uh, inject Lua scripts to access uh, RCU structure, for instance, and cache the policy there. So what we're gonna do in Lua in, in kernel space is just a few logic accessing these uh, data structure like a glue code. So going up to use space in that case would be way uh, slower. Right? Yeah, and I, actually that sounds reasonable, right? I mean, that you're not actually injecting the Lua VM in the hot path then, right? You're, you're keeping everything in the kernel BPF XDP VM, which is, it sounds reasonable. I'm looking at Tom. We are using the Lua VM in kernel as a glue, right? We use, uh, we are called by eBPF and we can send, uh, communicate back to eBPF in using the map, for instance. And uh, the thing is, we don't need to go, uh, on Lua for every packet, and you don't need to go to use space as well, right? It's like the midway, halfway approach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, I see somebody suggested. Okay, suggested the same thing. So, or something similar, I guess, not the same thing. Um, but, okay. okay. Let's go to the uh, next question. Is the Lua context shared among all messages on the same CPU? We use the, we have different contexts, uh, like different execution states for CPU, but can share data using uh, RCU or even the EPPF map. So every uh, state, execution state, is isolated from each other. But we can share memory using some safe mechanism, like our RCU and the map itself. OK, does each instance of Lua script run its own interpreter 
or one copy? You're muted. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we copy the the script among all instances of the VM. Like in XDP, we have one VM instance for every CPU. On NFLUA, we have uh, execution states created by the user itself, himself using the command line. So we can associate the, the state with a uh, namespace, for instance, a network namespace. In that case, it would, it would be only one state per uh, script, right? In XDP, we copy the script among all the CPU states. What is the state of maturity for the XDP Lua project? We are running these uh, in production right now in a CDN, um, but it's still under uh, development. I mean, it's not like we have a patch to submit promptly for the upstream or something like that. It's kind of biased on our use case, right? So we need to do some cleanup and evolution on top of this. Okay. Uh, the test results make it look like the test machine is too fast to get interesting data for XDP. Uh, would be nice uh, to have uh, 10 gigabits or faster um, because we're apparently running out of length throughput before CPU. So I guess that's more of a, a comment. Um, yes. That would, be, would be good to see that. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And it's actually the, the thing we are struggling the, the most because don't have like fancy uh, network interface and we are relying on uh, virtual environments, right? But as Tom pointed out, we may vary the, the CPU on, on capacity on such VMs, so we're definitely going to do that. Is the um, Slua Jet, oh, sorry, uh, is and, the Slua Jet Fluid Rio or your own VM? Sorry? Uh, is this Lua, Lua Jet? Sorry, it's Lua Rio, Lua Rio. Lua Rio, okay, thank you. It, it's uh, the, the actual main language, right? Not uh, the Lua JIT fork. And we are trying, that, that's something that are, is on our roadmap, that is to use Palini, that is like a type of Lua that allow us to, to compile Lua and perform some optimizations. It's like the approach, the Lua, main development is following to compete with Fluagit uh, performance. So it's something that is on our roadmap, not to use Fluagit directly because of all platform dependency, but we sure want to try Palini. That is pretty much Lua syntax with uh, type marks. Okay, uh, Jamil, you have your hand raised. Sorry, that's before I interjected. I'll, 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 I'll remove it. <laughs> okay, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of comments um, in the chat. Hopefully we can capture that. Uh, but I think that's all of the major questions. So uh, thank you very much. And as I mentioned, um, we're still ahead of time. So why don't we take a, a five minute uh, break and then uh, we'll um, continue. Hey, can we talk during this five minute break? Or